we live in a stunning area. Missouri and Illinois' greatest resource is also its great weakness. I think you have to wonder whether the house is going to be able, the home is going to be able to withstand the force of the water. Torrential rain pours into our rivers, creeks, and streams, creating magnificent roaring rapids. And I looked out my window and I could just see the waves crashing like they were like over the wall. It was huge. When our banks can't hold, chaos breaks loose. Just now lifted off the foundation and it's just crumbling in the rapid and the violent waters here. Rain ends, water falls, and nutrient-rich silt is left behind, setting the scene for bountiful harvests and breathtaking vistas. Spectacular sights of sunflowers, the peak time to get to the perfect photo in North County. On the Mississippi, in the shadow of the Gateway Arch, a mix of snow melt and pounding rain lifted the river to its all-time high, 49.58 feet in 1993. I was on this early morning shift at that point, too, and overnight was when all the thunderstorms would come in. And so I was coming in early because you would have those big complexes of thunderstorms, and I guess the big thing for us you get all this rain, you know, up in northwest Missouri, there were spots that had 30 inches of rain in the month of July. It's all got to go somewhere, and I guess for us, all I could think about was, what are we going to do with all this water? It wasn't the first time, and certainly wouldn't be the last. Seen only once before, in 1993. 2019 came close with 46 feet. No one is alive to remember the Missouri River's historic high. 40.11 feet in 1844, but 1993 was not far behind that with 40.04. River flooding is catastrophic and frustrating. Waters often rise slowly, giving people a chance to brace, but levee failures send torrents through entire towns. Friday, July 30th, around 10 o'clock. Efforts to hold the Monarch levee fail. The bulging Missouri unleashes its fury, engulfing the Chesterfield Valley in a single swallow. In best case scenarios, river floods last weeks. Everybody's working so hard to get the mud off of the patios, to get it all sprayed down, to get everything sanitized so that everyone can be open. In worst months. We've lived here since 1945 and I've never saw anything like this. I'm so blue, my house and wide away. I'm crying how long before North Day. That's why I'm crying. Mississippi heavy water blue. It's an awesome, awesome sight. There are acres and acres now literally underwater. The president came and looked. Gebhardt came and looked. Uh, they all came and looked. But the water's coming. It isn't stopping the water. This river is up uh, four feet higher than it ever was uh, in the history that these people have been living here. is a man can be the water recedes, cities clean up and prepare for the next one. While most federal levies held in 93, important lessons were learned and modifications are in place. Take the improved Monarch levy. The levy itself is taller and wider and it has has a very thick clay cap over it now to prevent water from flowing through the levee. Also, there are very large sand berms to counteract that pressure of the water coming under the levee and up through the ground. Unlike river flooding, where levees and flood walls can protect all that lies beyond the divide, flash flooding knows no boundaries. It's like when you're uh, watching those movies and you see people getting rescued. You never thought that would happen. But it did to residents in Brentwood. 
Hazelwood. The water just rushed in, so we had to go down to the other side, but it was still like waist deep or chest deep rather. Summer thunderstorms hit with no rhyme or reason, raining at jaw-dropping rates. July 2022, in a matter of hours, gauges in St. Charles, St. Louis, and Lincoln read over 10 inches of rain. The result? Unprecedented flash flooding. It happened all over again. It was just so fast. The water came flooding in. It's coming again from the front and the back at the same time. Different than river flood, flash floods rise and fall in a matter of minutes. People with no experience to flooding found themselves shoveling out muck. Never been through anything like that. We've been here for the past three years and we've seen a, some flooding in the parking lot, but it's never been like this before. It is not unusual. Uh, anytime you get into the summer, there is a potential of MCS development in what we call uh, mesoscale convective systems, thunderstorm clusters, basically. Um, those happen in the summer and uh, they can produce huge amounts of rain. Heavy summer rain is normal, but the frequency of flash flooding in St. Louis is not. What is unusual is the frequency of flooding that we've seen over the last, really the last 15 years. An argument is to be made for flash flooding being a man-made issue. Flash flooding in any city, really, is not unusual because of what a city is. That's a bunch of concrete and steel designed to divert water to drainage areas designed for a certain amount of water. If it exceeds that, you're going to have significant flooding regardless in a city. So yeah, St. Louis is no stranger to flash flooding. So what can be done? Permeable driveways, living roofs, places for the water to go and not run off. As the impact of global climate change comes into focus, St. Louis will need to prepare for more river flooding and flash flooding.